I'm Julia, the Child Protection Coordinator with the ISC in the DSC. Today, I will present you ISC's Integrated Child Protection Emergency Response to the Ebola outbreak in the DSC from 2018 to 2020. Between 2018 and 2020, DSC's 10th and worldwide second largest Ebola outbreak was declared in North Kivu and neighboring provinces. A lot of children were orphaned or separated from their caregivers. And until today, many who were affected by Ebola suffer stigma, isolation and increased poverty because they or their family members had become sick or died. Now responsible for the daily survival of their family members, they are often sexually exploited, engaged in child labor or in some other negative coping mechanism. The COVID-19 outbreak further aggravated the children's situation and increased their risk to different forms of violence, for example, domestic violence, which are already widespread in the DSC. In this context, the ISC has implemented an emergency response to respond to the Ebola outbreak, which integrates child protection activities with health, WASH and women's protection and empowerment interventions targeting children facing Ebola-related protection risks. Before going into more detail of what ISC is doing, I'd like to tell you about two stories of children who were affected by Ebola and whom our caseworkers are currently looking after, in order to help clarify why it is so important to prioritize child protection during infectious disease responses. Case example one is Claude, 15 years old boy. He lost both of his parents due to Ebola and is now taking care of his three younger siblings. His friends and family chased him and his siblings away because some of them had been hit by Ebola. He thus started collecting gravel from the street and selling it to get a few dollars a day so that he and his siblings can survive. And then there's Elizabeth, 14 years old girl. Her father died due to Ebola, following which her mother became sick who had already suffered from psychological distress, from caring for six spouse and the trauma of seeing close family and friends die in the past. At age 14, Elizabeth has to now take charge of her mother and her younger brother. She started selling vegetables and was obliged to go to the Maison de Tolerance, where she was sexually exploited so that she could bring at least something back to her family. And I can tell you the list of those stories each of which is so devastating, is so much longer. In such context, IEC's child protection activities reinforce existing community-based structures and provide individual support to children affected by Ebola and other child protection concerns. With COVID-19, activities were adapted to focus on both Ebola and COVID-19. One component of activities comprises case management services that are provided to children like Elizabeth and Claude and other children eligible for case management. An emergency fund allows to support particularly vulnerable and urgent cases in need to provide non-food items and pay for vital services. Another component focuses on psychosocial support and strengthening parental support. Trained PSS focal points in health facilities provide psychological first aid to children. Safe healing and learning spaces were also set up together with the community. But with their closure due to COVID-19, home-based PSS kits are distributed and messages on parenting skills, infused with Ebola and COVID-19 prevention messages, are reinforced as well as child-parent interactions. Another component focuses on risk communication and community engagement. Together with trained community focal points, messages on Ebola or COVID-19 and child protection related risks adapted to children and their parents are developed and spread. We are also in the process of developing frequently asked questions that will ensure a constant information loop from children to service providers and back to children. So far, we have seen positive impacts of our implemented activities. For example, children started practicing Ebola prevention measures and key child protection actors stated that less violence was used against children by communities. Parents also mentioned that safe spaces had helped children to rediscover they want to live. 
and key child protection act just further confirmed that children are now treated better within foster families and thanks to case management services children were able to recover from the impact of ebola and feel valued and fulfilled with new hope according to the children's quotes however there are many challenges associated with the response for example due to covid-19 activities were downsized Consequently, many children in need cannot be reached or supported in the way they should be. Until now, accessible funding has only been short-term and focused on children's immediate needs. And overall, response to infectious diseases is often presented as a health crisis, which makes it difficult to assess and understand the child-related risks and resulting impacts, such as child labor, children becoming caregivers of sick parents, sexual abuse and exploitation of children in order for them to get just something to eat. And then there's the assumption that working with local partners requires little administrative preparations. In regards to lessons learned, well, reaching zero cases within health epidemics does not mean that a crisis is over. Its long-term effects have huge devastating impacts on children. Sufficient time must be allowed for so that the negative effects can be overcome accordingly. Long-term investments are needed. And for this to be effective in humanitarian settings, given the funding cycle, we must involve local actors from the start. Thus, local actors must be part of the response to infectious diseases. Often seen as a health emergencies, the effects on children only begin to manifest or even when zero cases are reported. And the impact on children is life-changing. And then the value of providing individualized support to children in need is high. Their individual stories of having experienced an infectious disease are so manifold and shocking, each of which must be addressed accordingly. A multi-sector approach is needed. And finally, think about Elizabeth and Claude. Now that DSC has been declared Ebola free, they are just starting the journey to rediscover or to recover from their life changing loss caused by Ebola and they are left with little choice. Thank you.